Hello everyone and welcome to Lyrics Unwrapped, the podcast which analytically breaks down the best rap lyrics of all time, bringing you the hidden meaning and genius behind each bar. I'm your host, Chandler So. I know it's been a while since I put out an episode, but let me tell you something crazy. The only reason you are getting an episode from me today is because one of the rappers which I covered in a previous episode commented on that episode and said that he loved what I was doing. That rapper is Old Man Saxon from episode 2. If you haven't heard it, definitely listen to the episode, but as a content creator, hearing from him, getting that recognition, and knowing that my work is showcasing the brilliance of these artists is something that means a lot to me. Seeing that simple comment made me very happy and brought me back to revive this passion project I've kept on the back burner for far too long. So with that said, again, quick plug, follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at uh, Lyrics Unwrapped. That's on Facebook and on Instagram. Comment or message me what songs you want me to cover, what artists you want me to cover. Let me know what you like and what you don't like about the show. It means so much to me to hear feedback and support from anyone who listens, especially if you're one of the rappers I'm covering. I'm just kidding. If you're just an ordinary Joe who digs the podcast, you're, of course, more than welcome. And I would love to hear what you ought to say or what you got to say. On that topic... One of my friends who thinks my podcast is a dumpster fire, complete disaster, told me that I could make it a little less shitty by pre-writing the entire episode. So I decided to say fuck it and pre-wrote this entire episode. This is the first time I've ever done this, and this is the most time I've ever spent on a singular episode, and I think it has taken on a completely different feel and quality by doing this. I honestly can't decide whether or not this is better than the way it was in the past, so let me know what you think. If you love it, if you hate it, if you have comments, criticism, or compliments, let me know. The very last thing before we get into the episode is I stream my work and process on twitch.tv. If you want to be a part of the podcast creation process, come through, come listen to me rap, come analyze lyrics, come listen to rap with me, and debate the meaning of that rap which we analyze it on the podcast. I also stream myself freestyling and playing some video games if you want to watch that. The link is twitch.tv backslash Gucci Sosa. That's spelled G-O-O-C-H-I-E, Gucci. Then Sosa, it's a play off my last name, T-S-O-S-A. Link will be in the show notes. This episode is being recorded live on Twitch. So if you wanted to have a live Q&A with me after the show, or you wanted to watch how this is recorded live, come through to the Twitch. I let's fucking go, you lyric nerds. So you might know this next dude, or at least you might be aware of the band he's a part of, or heard of the band he's a part of. My next rapper is another artist that I believe is heavily slept on. His beats, mastering, and overall sound are incredible. Lyrics unparalleled. Flow encroaching God status, but the voice is rich and deep as Jeff Bezos' pockets. I'm, of course, talking about Black Thought here. Black Thought is probably one of the more prolific rappers that I'll be featuring, who you may not have heard of. He has featured on tracks with many big shots like Eminem, Logic, Raekwon, and even Fall Out Boy. Okay, did I? Let me recheck my notes there. Yep, Fall Out Boy. Word. But this is where you might have heard him from. Homeboy got a band with the homie Questlove called The Roots. They are the band that plays on Jimmy Fallon's late night show. Alright, now that the boy lauded, let's dive into the lyrics. The name of the song is Fentanyl, and it's off his Streams of Thought 2 album. Listen up close, kids. Real drugs do real things. Go to extremes, crash regimes, and kill kings. In the last reprieve, he still sings how the task that the master needs reveals wings. And though he has to bleed, it still brings him heaven and hell. Better believe the truth stings. Tying his arm off with violent strings, his eyes and dreams. Diverted as the siren screams eternal. Overdosage is a marketing scheme that's just as dark as it seems. When it's a part of your team, with the esteem of a savant. As smart as a genius, vanity carried the dope into the heart of a fiend. Another destroyed life was meant to be more righteous in the face of this full-on opioid 
prices While the wolves pull a wool on and prey on vices Still the dogs with the hood on It's way more frightening for death You're not ready Trust me, I'm deadly as the fentanyl That killed Prince and Tom Petty I will venture still into the trench And bomb heavy Every infidel will feel the strength of my melee And so it begins as evil intends to start off slow to graduate the needles and pins. You will have forsaken everybody, even your friends, and see where it ends. The visuals are reason to cringe. You're watching this? He took a shot in the esophagus. He's in the zone and stone like a sarcophagus. Try stopping this. I'm on top of the metropolis. It's narcissist over narcotics anonymous. Yeah, you fucking know that was that good shit. Oh my god. 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 Black Thought, one of the realists. I know you guys want to get into it. I know you guys want to get into it. But you need a lot of marinade in that one. That one's that one's heavy. That one's deep. That one's heavy. Those are some real words. Those are some clever lyrics. I'm excited to get into it. Y'all ready? Okay. Okay. Let's fucking do this. Real drugs do real things. Go to extremes crash regimes and kill kings all right already the rhyme scheme here is pretty cool extremes regimes kings a lot of internal rhyming it's a, it all flows very nicely it has a lot of nice poetic elements but hey so as you know the song is about fentanyl and if you don't know what fentanyl is it is pretty much super powered heroin that shit 30 to 50 times stronger than heroin or put another way it is 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine. It is an extremely dangerous drug that is currently ravaging the U.S. in an epidemic commonly referred to as the opioid crisis. In 2019 alone, 36,000 people died as a result of fentanyl or fentanyl analogs. What Black Thought is saying here is that dangerous drugs can have significant impacts. However, if you're a filthy nerd who spends their time analyzing rap lyrics on a podcast, you might recognize an interesting reference here in this line. He says that drugs kill kings, right? He says real drugs do real things, go to extremes, crash regimes, and kill kings. And if you remember from listening to the whole verse just now, one of the lines much later down in the song is, Trust me, I'm deadly as the fentanyl that killed Prince and Tom Petty. Now think it backwards. Fentanyl that killed the prince. Real drugs do real things. Kill kings. Fentanyl kills kings. It killed prince. Get it? Get it? Some clever shit. Black well, Thought always out here with that clever shit that dude never fails to deliver. In the last reprieve, he still sings how the task that the master needs reveals wings. And though he has to bleed, it still brings him heaven and hell. Better believe the truth stings, tying his arm off with violin strings. Holy fuck. This piece right here is so vivid and soulful that I could feel its ethereal essence dancing through my amygdala. These five bars feel like that Lupe fiasco type shit. Just some words so majestic and colorful that they should be in an art museum next to a Van Gogh. In the last reprieve, he still sings. A reprieve is the cancellation or postponement of a punishment, which is often the punishment of death. So, Black Thought here is talking about this dude who is injecting fentanyl, and as we know, with fentanyl being the insanely dangerous drug that it is, that dude is about to die. So, right before he dies, he's singing. In his last moments, in his last reprieve, he's singing. He's floating on cloud nine. He's experiencing euphoria. The next line, how the task that the master needs reveals wings is pretty difficult. I thought about this one a lot, and I think I have two good theories as to what is being said. Of course, there is the idea that it's echoing what is being said before and after about how getting high gives you metaphorical wings or a feeling of euphoria. I don't think that this is the true meaning of the sentence due to how repetitive that statement would be and also because I think my other theories are a little bit more fitting. So the first theory I have is that the task that the master needs reveals wings. The master in this case is the addict. The task is shooting up fentanyl and revealing wings refers to becoming an angel, which means to die. The sentence is stating that the master, the addict, needs to shoot up fentanyl because they are addicted and dependent on the drug and that they are actively killing themselves by doing so. 
The second theory I have is that the master is actually the healthcare system of the United States. Later on, Black Thought discusses how the opioid crisis is manufactured by the healthcare industry to profit off of legal drug dealing through painkiller prescriptions. So the master, the healthcare system, needs to make money through the task of selling opioids, which reveals wings, which kills people. And though he has to bleed, it still brings him heaven and hell. This one is pretty easy. He has to bleed. Injecting himself with the needle causes him to bleed. And heaven and hell refer to the heaven of the high and the hell of the aftermath or the come down or the reality. Better believe the truth stings. Again, the truth of understanding how fucked up this epidemic is and the stinging of the needle. It's clever, but I'm sure you guys get that one. Tying his arm off with violin strings. Tying his arm off with violin strings. Holy fuck. This one is actually insane. What the fuck? I've been machine gunning your ears and massive brains with sentences about rap lyrics, trying to cram as much content into as short of a time as possible with this podcast. Now, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to let you visualize that one for a second and melt over it. If you are driving now, please don't crash your car. But if you do, I understand. I would probably crash my car there too. Tying his arm off with violin strings. Tying his arm off with violin strings. Now, I just realized if you aren't familiar with the process of injecting drugs, what tying off his arm means is he is literally tying a string, taking a string and tying it around his arm in order to stop the circulation in his arm, uh, which makes your veins bigger and easier to hit and inject the drugs into them. But the metaphor of this sentence carries enough weight to make, to make you just say, damn, to make you just say, damn. What the fuck? When you start to digest it and start to think, you have these kids in America, uh, across the world, who used to make art, who used to smile so brightly, who used to laugh and sing and play and do good things for other people and bring positivity and betterment everywhere they went. And then, over time, due to circumstances, corrupt economic systems, etc., they slip into drug addictions so toxic and destructive that they end up exchanging their arts, their creativity, their passion for a high. They end up trading their souls for more drugs. I don't know why, but I can just see this all in my mind's eye. I can watch the entire movie of this boy grow up through this system. This bright little boy with a smile and a do-no-wrong attitude gets dealt a bad hand one day, gets hit by a car or something like that, then given addictive painkillers by the doctors and have a very human response to those painkillers, which is to become incredibly addicted and dependent on them. If you don't know what it's like to have your thoughts just controlled and entered into your head unwarranted, if you don't know what it's like to have thoughts pop up into your brain and dominate everything, unescapable thoughts, cravings, desires, illogical, yet feel so entirely ingrained in your being. These thoughts feel like they are you. If you've never had these thoughts, then you've never fucking dealt with addiction. This shit is hauntingly terrifying. It's something you can never imagine until you're there. I think that's why I can see this play out so vividly in my head and why this bar chills my core. Black Thought says more in this bar than most artists say in their entire fucking career. This is what art is. And if you want to be some punk ass hater who doesn't think seven words can be a story, let me read you an entire book by Hemingway. Renowned author, writer, Ernest Hemingway. Are you ready? This is an entire novel. I don't want you to miss it. Baby shoes. For sale. Never worn. Yeah. I'm sorry to be bringing up this deep shit here on a rap podcast, but these are the type of topics which profound art tends to gravitate towards. Fuck, are we even talking about rap anymore? <laughs> Where are we? Ah, uh, yes, not even halfway through the snippet from Black Thought. Ah, uh, fuck. All right. His eyes and dreams diverted as the siren screams eternal. The guy died. The ambulance is pulling up, but the guy is already dead. 
due to fentanyl. Overdosage is a marketing scheme that's just as dark as it seems when it's part of your team. This is referring to the idea I said earlier that the opioid crisis was created by the healthcare industry to profit off of the sale of incredibly addictive painkiller prescriptions. That end bit, when it's part of your team, means that this is occurring in your own home. It's hard to realize how dark and grim things are in the world until it's happening right in your own backyard, right in your own life. With the esteem of a savant as smart as a genius, he's calling the healthcare system, which devised this economic situation of legally peddling drugs, very intelligent for how effective it is at bringing in fatter cash flows than poking your finger into the Saudi desert and barreling the global incinerator that comes out of the floor. Vanity carried the dope into the heart of a fiend. Okay, I feel iffy on this one. This is a pun, but I don't know if I really care for it. He uses the word vanity here as a pun, meaning vanity, extreme pride in one's appearance, and also to mean vein, as in the vein that delivers blood through your body. I can't understand how pride in one's appearance can bring about a situation that encourages the opioid crisis we are currently in. But maybe Black Thought knows something I don't. But yeah, it's a pun on how you inject the drugs into your veins and it gets pumped to your heart. Maybe the pride aspect of vanity is what should be focused on here, not the appearance part. The pride of the healthcare industry in making that 20% of the economy type money is what is bringing this about. And that's maybe the point he's trying to make. Anyway, I think you get the point. Another destroyed life was meant to be more righteous in the face of this full-on opioid crisis while the wolves pull the wool on and prey on vices. Still, the dogs with the hoods on is way more frightening. This is simple. He's saying that the healthcare industry is completely fooling the public and the public still thinks black people wearing hoodies are the problem and not the doctors killing hundreds of people they swore to help. For death, you're not ready. Trust me, I'm deadly as the fentanyl that killed Prince and Tom Petty. I included these lyrics just to come full circle with the ones I said earlier about how he said that fentanyl kills kings like Prince. Okay, so there are some lyrics that follow that. And I think they are good, but I don't think they need as much explaining. So I'm going to skip those and get to the last four bars, which I think are really damn cool. He says, you watching this? He took a shot in the esophagus. He's in the zone and stoned like a sarcophagus. Try stopping this. I'm on top of the metropolis. It's narcissists over narcotics anonymous. I just love the rhyme scheme. I've actually heard esophagus and sarcophagus rhymed before and i actually believe you probably have too kanye west's monster with Nicki minaj and rick ross kanye says have you ever had sex with the pharaoh ah, i put that pussy in a sarcophagus now she claiming that bruised her esophagus not saying that black thought still copied this from kanye just pointing it out I also think it's pretty cool how they both used these two words in entirely different contexts and meanings. But Black Thought pushes it even further by continuing the difficult rhyme scheme, going from esophagus, sarcophagus, metropolis, anonymous. This dude just got bars, and you better be putting some respect on the man's name. But wait, there's more. The very last line, it's Narcissus over Narcotics Anonymous. Holy fuck. Again, this dude's saying more with five words than I can with 3,870 words. And for those of you who want to count them up, exactly at that point with the word with, I have typed 3,870 words in this script, okay? So again, do you understand the gravity of what Mr. Thought is saying? Fucking think. It's Narcissus over Narcotics Anonymous. Narcotics Anonymous is a program aimed at helping people get off of narcotics. The program is supposed to support them. It's supposed to help them beat their addiction and become clean. But Black Thought is saying that narcissists are running the program. They are the ones in charge. And who is the narcissist in question here? 
Why? It's the healthcare industry. The same motherfuckers responsible for helping people get clean are the same selfish, self-centered, money over morality willing to kill other human beings for a dollar bill motherfuckers who are selling the drugs. Ain't that a conflict of interest now? Wow. Okay. This is now a politics podcast, I guess, huh? Uh... Uh, Psych Bitch has always been a political podcast. Rap has always been political. And if you don't think so, it's just that you are too sheltered to have ever noticed. You live a life where these are just words said to a beat, and you've never thought about the person saying them. You've never thought about how much further these concepts can go beyond the innocuous mention of them. You've never had to experience the life in which they've lived. You weren't there for the genesis of rap and sod's evolution out of poetry. You don't know what you don't know. It's not your fault you haven't noticed this, but it's never too late to open your eyes and start to take it in. It's not too late to try to try on new perspectives that make up the world. Everyone lives a different life than you. And once you start to be able to really accept that fact and live your life by it, you'll start to feel a very different way about many things in your life. It's okay. I'm not here to push an agenda on you. I don't even agree with many of the political beliefs and opinions espoused by many rappers. I'm not a political operative. I don't even belong to a political party in the U.S. I'm an independent. I am willing to consider things individually as they are, arguments as they come, and detach them from the person saying them. I'm able to agree with some stuff someone says and disagree with others. And a final word, a final thing, I do have a significant amount of education and experience in the political world and the world of policy. I do have a master's degree from USC, the second best policy school in the nation, in public administration. I might have a little bit of knowledge on the topics I talk about. Again, this is strictly a rap podcast, but when the content of the rap gets political, I'll bring you the content with its full glory. So that's the episode. Again, Old Man Saxon, if you're listening, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And everyone else, please follow me and interact with me on Facebook or Instagram. Give me feedback and feel free to watch my Twitch stream to see the behind the scenes process of this stuff or watch me record live. Okay, this is Lyrics Unwrapped, the podcast which analytically breaks down the best rap lyrics of all time, bringing you the hidden meaning and genius of each bar. I'm your host, Chandler So. Signing off till next time.